Well, hello everyone. This is Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child, and I am excited to be here tonight. This is the first full week of January 2021, and if you haven't heard, Top Picks uh, Curriculum Fair is spending the whole month on Reset Your Homeschool. And so tonight, I get the privilege of talking to you about goals and vision, but not just creating goals or creating vision, but let's take what we find and let's put it into practice and let's make your homeschool the best homeschool it can be by doing just a little bit of digging in here. So I'm going to share tonight, I'm going to talk about our education. I'm going to talk about goals. I'm going to talk about vision and motivation. And then I'm going to show you several different ways that you can homeschool that you can then choose what's the best method, the best resources, the best approach for you to homeschool. But it's all based on you. It's based on your um, your goals, your vision. We You don't really just go pick something just because your best friend's doing it or because you get on top picks and everyone's like, oh, this is the coolest thing. You really need to choose your curriculum, your resources, your supplemental resources, the entire way that you um, homeschool based on you. Not me, not everyone else, but on you and your family and your kids. So we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight, and I am super excited. Before we get started, I am going to introduce my family. This was from a year ago because I don't have this year's pictures, but this is actually a Christmas picture from a year ago. We homeschooled for 10 years. Uh, my kids went to private school. Then we homeschooled, and they actually participated in the public school at the same time. And then my son, who was the baby, um, came back and did um, private school. So we did a variety of things, and it was all based on what was best, we thought, for each child that year. So Ashley is our oldest. She is married to Jesse here, and they have Faith and Elizabeth, who are almost four and six years old, and Ashley homeschools, virtual school, she does it all sort of thing, but she's a stay-at-home mom. Gentry is my middle daughter. She is married to Andrew, and they have baby Landry, who's a lot bigger than that, and toddles around and talks and can say all sorts of words. Um, anyway, and then the baby of the family is Hunter right there. I got to spend Saturday with him. It was his birthday, so I took him out to lunch. So there's Hunter. He's not married, no girlfriends, no nothing, but let me tell you, all my friends want to set him up with, um, I'll stay there, with their kids. So those are my kids. The reason I introduce you to them is to let you know the things I share with you are not a bunch of research. The things I share with you are things that I actually tried. I did a lot of trial and error because when I started homeschooling, first of all, classical education is a huge thing now. They didn't even have that hardly then. Well, Train Mind, it was written three years after I actually started homeschooling. So there's a lot of resources that are around now. And I am here to help you try to choose what's best for you. So let's talk for a minute and then about homeschooling. Homeschooling actually provides you a ton of freedoms. The freedom on what to study when to study, how to learn, how long to study, and what kind of educational experiences. Now, if I were doing a screen capture, I would be showing you a picture of a classroom. You can all imagine a classroom. That's what we all tend to do. We all want to go, ooh, let's pull that classroom and let's do that here. And let's strangle our kids and take all the love of learning out of them. Let's take all the freedoms that you have in homeschooling out. Really, what we need to do is look at real life. Like right on the other side of this um, winter scene is our living room. And we did so much homeschooling in there. And there were just some couches and chairs and a fireplace. I still remember taking a picture of my kids. It was like the only like, oh, isn't this a cool picture um, of them on the other side doing their work or listening or re while I read aloud while the fireplace was sparkling. It seemed quite quaint and perfect but let me tell you it didn't always happen that way but on the other side we did a lot of stuff we did memory work we did read aloud we did discussions we did critical thinking we did bible we did art appreciation and music appreciation the reason we could do it right over there is we had the freedom to not feel like we had to have a pen and paper or a workbook to be able to homeschool and we could do it over there now i'm not sharing you all the ways you can homeschool right now today i'm talking about vision and goals 
and then matching that vision and goals to the way that you homeschool. So you have a lot of freedoms. One of the first questions that I would tell you to ask, if I can pull my little papers out, is what is an educated person? There are three ways that I would define an educated person. One is an educated person is someone who knows what to think about. They can, if you tell them what to do, they can do it. That's an educated person. And let me show you a picture of this. This is the person that comes to school and they come right here. They do everything that everyone else does. They do all the activities. They're tested the same way and they're approved. And they're like, oh, good job. You get to move to the next station. Do everything that everyone else does. And then you're tested the same way everyone is. And oh, good job. Move to the next station. There are 12 stations. And when you finish those 12 stations, you are approved for the job market. And I'm going to be really honest. I've had, it's not just homeschoolers. I've had people in England tell me they felt like it was a factory school. They just did everything that this person did. And those people learn what to think. The next way we can define an educated person is um, what I would call um, someone who knows when to think. So if we come to the car mechanic and it goes clunk, 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 then the car mechanic knows, oh, this is what I do when this happens. On another scale, a very different scale, a doctor, you come to the doctor and you're like, oh, it hurts here. He's like, oh, when it hurts here, this is what you do. This is a professional education. It's what I can call a competitive conveyor belt. So we have a public education. We have a professional education. And then the last one is how to think. We teach our kids how to think, how to critically think, how to think for themselves, how to make wise decisions. When I heard this discussion between these three different types of an educated person, I knew I wanted my child to know how to think. And so I formed everything I did according to that. Now, that's just me. Other people are okay in doing different things. And I am not saying there's one better than the other. I'm just saying you need to realize what you're doing and what you're providing. If you were just giving multiple choice tests and going through a curriculum, doing the checklist, you're teaching your kids what to think. If you are giving them some more opportunities to learn when to think during different opportunities, then you're teaching them when to think. But if you're teaching your kids to make wise decisions and to make critical thinking um, decisions and to think critically without a bunch of other people putting their input, then you're teaching your kids how to think. You need to decide, number one, what is an educated person? From there, we need to decide what is, sorry, what is a strategic blueprint? Normally, I would have screens here, but I decided it would just be me tonight. So we're going to talk about a strategic blueprint. I'm going to do it on the side. We'll do it over here. Okay, so what is an educated person? The next thing you need to talk about is what is your strategic blueprint? And so this includes... What is your strategic vision? Where do you see your kids headed? And I'll be really honest, I didn't really know the answer to that question until a few years, until a lot of trial and error. For me personally, for our family personally, our strategic vision was that our children would know, would be able to think critically and biblically and make wise decisions in all areas of life, not just academics, not just job. Everything, marriage, family, church, community, business, everywhere. I wanted them to be able to think, know how to think. That was my strategic blueprint. You have to come up with yours. Now, this is not a workshop on, like, I have questions that I could fill you out with all of these. This is just an overview. I'll give you some resources at the end. I've even given you a resource already in the description if you want to go take a look at that. So first we have a strategic vision. Then we have a strategic mission. In your family, in your homeschool, what is your mission? What is your motivation for doing what you do? For me personally, I have a big heart to be able to help others. And so I'm always looking for areas that I can help others. With homeschooling, this and the way it's just exploded, I've been able to spend a lot more time helping homeschoolers. Whether I sell a course or not, I mean, yes, I need to pay my bills. But whether or not, I am here to help you. And you need to know that. 
Then finally, we have strategic goals. What are your goals? So we have strategic vision, we have strategic mission and motivation, and then we have strategic goals. What are your goals for your kids? So let me name a few. Maybe your goal is that they are able to have a job and provide for themselves and provide for their family. That is an excellent goal for you to have. Maybe it's to go to college. That's another good goal. I'm not saying any of these are good or bad. I will tell you that when my kids were in junior high, we were driving from here to Houston with our church to go ice skating, and they were asking me about um, college. And at the time, I said, well, if there's a reason to go to college, then we'll go to college. But we're not just going to go to college for to go to college just because everyone goes there. That's just a checkbox. That's just how uh, what to think. I wanted my kids to go to college for a reason. And my oldest, Ashley, she graduated in May from high school. She didn't start college till January the next year. She actually got her degree in a year and a half. And it was all online from Thomas Edison, I believe, um, college in New Jersey. And then she went and got a teaching certificate here in Texas because she could do it after a degree and went to go work and teach at-risk kids because her heart was at-risk kids. That is an unusual way to do things. Now, Gentry, she was going to college no matter what. And so that's what she wanted to do. And she has been able to have some great career opportunities and family opportunities. Hunter did the traditional thing. He just started and then worked his way through college and then ended up with a good job. Another goal for you, a strategic goal, is... Um, oh, I completely forgot. I guess I'm doing things differently. Here were my first two things. What is education? What are your freedoms? Um, another goal is that they are prepared for adult life. And what do I mean by this? I mean that they are able to grow up and be good husbands and wives. They can grow up and be good dads and moms. Do they have skills? Do they have the tools for doing that? And I will just give you a clue. At the end of February, we are hosting, I am personally hosting a Life Skills Leadership Summit. And I will be sharing more information about that here in the group. But that is a great way. One of our tracks is communication, relationships, life skills. So are they prepared for adult life? Do they know how to manage a home here? Do they know how to do the laundry? Do they know how to cook? Do they know how to change the oil? Do they know how to do finances and money management? That's one of our number one life skills people ask about, money management and finances. So we'll be covering that as well. Are you really preparing your kids for adult life? Is that a goal of yours? Another goal might be that your kids, excuse me, <laughs> are self learners. They have the skills to think and they can independently think. I didn't even completely, I had ideas and I was using tools, but again, it was trial and error. They were my guinea pigs. I didn't realize the things that I was doing with my kids truly prepared them to be independent thinkers and self-learners. We did a lot of discussions. They had to write things. They didn't just do, they hardly ever did. I don't know that they've ever done multiple uh, choice tests. They had to do a lot of thinking. But one of the things that really encouraged me was as we were driving from here to my parents one time, it was just Gentry and I, and she said, Mom, thank you so much for what you did to prepare me for college. My friends are not prepared for college. They don't know how to study. They don't know how to manage their time. They don't really know how to do any of that. Thank you. And they don't even know how to study for a test, much less the skills it is to organize everything. And so that was one thing. So I think that's really important. So those were part of my strategic goals. Here I have. See, I'm a little slow. Didn't even realize. Here are our four things. So that is another thing. So it's strategic vision, strategic mission, strategic motivation, and strategic goals. The last goal, and then I'll put this up here, is that our kid, you might be, that your kids are mature in Jesus Christ. If you are a Christian, you probably want to give them a good biblical foundation. And that was one of our goals as well. So, under the blueprint, we have vision, mission, motivation, and goals. Those are things you need to think about. Setting goals that you really have. And this is not like, oh, I'm just going to pop this out in five minutes. It's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to give you some resources at the end. I've already put one resource, a link in your um, in the description to this video.
So we need to um, decide what is an educated person, what is education for our homeschool. Then we need to come up with our strategic blueprint, which is what is our vision, our mission, motivation, and goals. From there, we want to wrap our homeschool around whatever you've decided. And we come, I have some different blueprints that I offer. Blueprints are ways you would homeschool. So the first blueprint is the conveyor belt that I've already said. It's going to teach your kids what to think. And so they are going to always be following someone. That would be a good job if they're just going to go get a job from someone and someone tells them what they need to do all the time. The conveyor belt is very traditional, tends to be more of a textbook type um, education. The next one is a classical education. The classical education, I really believe, encourages um, thinking skills. There are three parts to the classical education, and that is logic, and grammar and rhetoric and they are based by age and i really like it because they're based on child development and so when our kids are little we do give them a lot of information that they just memorize they use songs they use repetition they use um chants that type of thing and we also do a lot of reading with them we read all along then when it comes to the grammar stage that's logic that's when you start teaching them to argue logically the hows and the whys of the civil war then we have rhetoric which is at the end and then this is where we actually have our kids be able to take all the information that they've learned on a topic and be able to persuade someone with their opinion those are a lot of higher level thinking skills that is where they're really going to learn how to think so we have conveyor belt we have classical another one is the charlotte mason um blueprint charlotte mason was someone in the um from germany in the 19 or uh, 19 the 1800s she was appalled at what education was doing back in the 1800s can you believe we're appalled at it now this was 200 years ago she was like really upset about it and she believed and what she saw is education we're just pretending like kids were containers and we just start pouring bits of information in so that they know what to think and that's all she did and she said i'm going to do something different so she is uh, if you follow her methods she is going to be big on real life education making it real to the child it will be real books not a bunch of twaddle what do i mean by twaddle and real books let's just give you a, a definition american girl books okay my kids read all of these so i'm not i'm not um picking on any of them but american girl books current choppy sentences not good language and not even good character i remember stories where the um, girl snuck out in the middle of the night and there were no consequences let's go to little house on the prairie or anna green gables definitely consequences for not following the authorities and then rich beautiful language as well and really ideas that we could talk about real living books or i have ideas that we can talk about and that's what she was all about she also believed in giving them real life experiences like going to the museum like going to the symphony to the um, plays to go on nature hikes and wander around even in the snow when it's freezing cold you know put all the parkas on and go outside and see what's going on in nature if you haven't ever done that or if you're not sure read a book called owl moon it's all about a dad who takes his son out at nighttime to be able to see the owls at nighttime okay then another blueprint that we could follow to meet up with our strategic blueprint is the unit study approach the unit study approach is basically taking a theme and centering everything about it how do we do this let's say astronomy i don't know about you but we went out i went outside to see the star of bethlehem because it hadn't been seen in 800 years whether you're a person of faith or not that is an astronomical um, event well unfortunately i went out twice on what two different days and it was too cloudy to see it but i watched it on video but let's say we were going to study astronomy we would take astronomy and we would read books about astronomy we would read about history like maybe the biography of galileo we would read the science of astronomy i remember going outside and we actually um, made a solar system outside that was we put the sun in the middle of the yard and then we distanced everything from the sun where the planets were we also did the little um 
shoe boxes where you could do constellations in them. We did math, especially going outside and figuring out all the ratios to be able to draw that solar system out in the yard. We would write about people, scientists, or we would write poems about poetry. I mean, about poetry, about astronomy. You could do art projects on astronomy. You could read poems on astronomy. You could go to the Bible and read about the stars that are mentioned in the Bible. All of those are related to unit study. It's all centered on one thing. Another a blueprint would be the resource-rich blueprint. Now, if you've ever heard of unschooling, it is similar. But for me personally, and I'm a person of faith, so I go back to the Bible, and it says, and I forgot to bring the verse, that um, a child is a disgrace. Oh, I can't remember it. Basically, when he wanders off and does what he wants. And I, when you look at John Holt, unschooling doesn't really line up for me in the Bible. But delight directed learning resource rich in learning definitely lines up and that is where you have resources around the room i'm staring at two bookshelves right now there are books there there's another bookshelf on the other side of that um uh door and then on the other side of the wall over there are more books we have books everywhere now i'm gonna give you a little clue if you are a resource rich person and you have books everywhere i would recommend taking your books and putting your toddler books in a basket, putting your elementary books down on the lower shelves, putting your junior high, elementary, and adult up on the higher shelf. Make your books accessible. We had tubs of science experiment equipment, tubs of art supplies. Even though I actually did a lot of these, I didn't ever follow any of them one. I actually think I love the resource rich, delight directed. Find what your kids are delighted about and then be able to center their learning on that. Then the last one I'm going to share tonight is Christian leadership. And I've already mentioned I'll be talking a lot about that at the end of February at our Life Skills Leadership Summit. But Christian leadership is where you basically are, well, I guess I should put these up. You're going to take all, I got a box. You're going to take all of these different resources or different blueprints and, um, and combine them. Christian leadership is where you're going to take the best of each one of them and you're going to do it with the purpose. You are going to raise your kids to influence, to impact, to make wise decisions. Because, you know, one thing you may go, well, my kids are not going to grow up to be a CEO or president of the United States. You may That may be true. But more than likely, your child, the norm is, let's just say norm, highest percentage, they will grow up and be moms and dads. That means they need to be leaders of their home. That means they need the ability to be able to lead. And that's one reason I am so excited about the Life Skills Leadership Summit that we will be offering. And I'll be telling you more about that. I don't have links to share with you right now because the web pages aren't even made. But Christian leadership is going to take the best of all of it. And it's going to do it with um, purpose. And the other word here is Christian. I actually believe that we can raise our kids to be leaders, but not necessarily good leaders. And so I wanted to raise, I wanted to teach my kids to be leaders that could follow Jesus, follow as a servant, as a follower, and then take what they learn and be examples. They could be a servant leader for Jesus, which we all need to be. They could be a leader in the company. They could be a leader in the community. They could be a leader in the church, or they could just not just they could be a leader in their family actually leading as a dad and a mom are probably some of the most important leadership roles that we have so if you are listening and you are a mom or a dad let me tell you you are doing an excellent job and i applaud you for the job that you are doing in leading your family by being a dad or a mom that's raising their kids and i just want to commend you for that as well now that is a lot of information. I do have some resources. Let me just close this out by saying strategic homeschooling. Strategic Christian homeschooling is this. And these words which I command to you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your houses and on your gates. That is what I call true education. That is what I call homeschooling. 
That is not, that is what I call true education. Schooling uses school books. Education uses real books. And I believe when we raise our kids up and we walk with them all day long, when the way, as they lie down, as they rise up, that's when we truly can give them an education. But you may be going, okay, that's a lot of information, Carrie. How do, how do I do this? Well, I've got a few, uh, oh, I forgot one. I forgot the most important part. How do we do this? How do we choose which one of these? You, I keep forgetting to look at my notes. I'm not used to this. I'm used to clicking a PowerPoint and I can just read my slides. First thing we need to do to choose your um, blueprint is you need to match it with your vision, mission, motivation, and goals, whatever that happens to be. You need to pray and just see what God's telling you. He will tell you. It's maybe going to take more than five minutes, but give yourself a, a few weeks or a month. Discuss it with your spouse. See what they have. Other people can speak truth into you. And then look at, look at you, your family, and your kids. So your family, if your family lives in a high rise, um, it's probably going to look different than a family that lives on the farm. Oh, whatever you choose. If your family has 10 kids and your best friend has one kid your homeschool will look different if you are type a person you're probably not going to do real well with the resource rich uh, resources because that's where they got stuff everywhere or the unit study one you need to look and see what works best for you your family your kids your homeschool don't do it just because it's your best friends do it because it is what is best for you. Now, I really did get to the end of this. I sort of um, scooted around. So let me just tell you, I do have a course called Approaches to Christian Homeschooling. It will give you more details about this. It is a seven-week course that you can work through with videos that are a lot deeper than what I could go through. Uh, each week probably has about a 30 to 45-minute video. It will actually give you a book that you're going to work through, our Approaches to Christian Homeschooling. It will give you... Um, weekly assignments and study guides so the first two or three weeks are going to go through this and the last four weeks are going to go through your blueprints and then help you make a decision so if something's not working or you're not quite sure that things are working well that is what i would recommend um this is what jessica said i loved all the information and simple examples that you shared during the course it was very helpful thank you so much for these classes they are truly a blessing i have the link in the description to this video and you can actually say 30 percent if you use the code top reset because we're resetting our homeschool in january and this is top pick so we're going top reset 21. this will actually save you 30 percent off of the normal enrollment course go to that link and you can read more about it i want to end with heather nations Heather Nations made a very kind comment. If you do have a question, I should have been telling you all along, feel free to leave a comment and we, I'll be happy to answer any questions or if you want to, um, to PM me as well, you can do that. But she says, homeschooling should be customized, which I totally agree. That's why we have all these different choices. I often find myself comparing and being afraid that I am not doing things right. I love the information about Christian homeschooling. This really helps me to see where to proceed for our homeschooling future by focusing on the different virtues of homeschooling. And then that also allows you to focus on the different parts of a strategic blueprint and where you come into play with all of these things. You need to take what you decide and your answers to these questions and match them over here as well. So that's a little longer than I normally talk here, but I am so glad that you spent some time with me this evening. I hope this was encouraging and helpful to you as well. Remember that you can go to that link. I'll leave it later and you can save 30% with Top Reset 21. I am Carrie Beck with How to Homeschool My Child. Y'all have a great evening.